Okay. Within a moment, we'll be able to paint the water. Bit of I've got a bit of accidental alizarin crimson there, but it doesn't matter. That's that's fine. It's I can drown it out with uh, yellow and viridian green to make it look like the colours that are actually in the photo in the water in the photo. So not much evidence of of light, and there is light. Generally speaking, there is light in this patch of water but there's no highlights per se. So there's no need really to worry too much about leaving the pa white paper here. Um, yes, there's light on the water, but they're not highlights. Okay, this area up here seems to be similar to the color that's over here. Very pale, very pale, nice light area. Right, so my, this is because of the sort of complexity, if you like, of the scene, I'm inclined to bring the mount around it earlier than I would perhaps on a more simpler scene. Um, and, and that's because, you know, I can't see where it's going as easily when it's more complicated, but by this is magic about placing, isolating it with a mount around it. There's a magic about that that allows you to see the design. Um, when it's isolated with borders like this, you can see the design better. So uh, this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that that gate there is a bit heavy, okay? Now, so there's, there's a second question. If I think that that gate area is looking a bit heavy, by heavy, I mean a bit dark, uh, too much weight in it, too much strength in it, too much tone in it. Um, you've got to ask a second question before you do anything about it. Is it the gate too dark or is it the um, neighbouring areas, the walls either side, are too light? So um, there's one thing for sure. It, it, it's the balance isn't right there right now. It's not right, correct. But I'm loath to lighten it, and I could if, if I if I decided, yep, no, it's definitely about the gate. The gate definitely needs to be lighter. What I would do is I would take a nice soft, big round brush like the one we've been using here. I would put some water in there evenly over it like this carefully, and give it a couple of seconds, half a minute to a minute, and I would just start lifting lifting the paint off to lighten it. Um, but as I say, I think. My gut decision is, I think it's more to do with the neighboring area than it is to do with the with the gate itself. So it's great. Seeing the mount around it enables me to, to pick up on tonal areas. Um, right, but before I do anything about that, because there's still a bit of wetness down there, um, and it will give me more time to make the decision. I'm going to dry that off and we're going to go into the cottages. Okay, so if you haven't already guessed, I'm picking up my little pickle lid again. Small brush with a good point on it because I want to get um, I want to get into that. So I just picked up the tiniest amount of water. In fact, tiniest amount, it's still, that makes it too wet. So I'm gonna to have to get rid of that bit of the wet out of this, the water out of this brush. And that, I just have a few trial areas. Now I know that this, that's probably gonna dry a bit lighter. Um, I don't really wanna start paint, counting the amount of windows up here. The only thing I think you should consider is that how you're going to um, break up the, 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 the properties. I mean, I wouldn't just go putting windows in too randomly. Um, you need to sort of say, well, that there is one building. So you'd expect perhaps sort of, to, you, need, you need to know that in terms of how to space your windows. If we move to the next property, then, you know, 
being careful to to sort of put the windows where you'd expect them in that in that measurement so now it turns starts to turn here the building starts to turn so things get a little bit tighter see how these three windows or whatever uh, 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 squeeze together but these are more open there's a, there's a greater measurement here and they go even tighter as they turn the corner down here to a point where you can't see one building for the for the other to the other now if, if i get if i do what i've picked up i've saying about uh, lines around buildings if i ever sort of think well that's not broken enough I'm straight in with a finger to break the line like this. So if I came across here and I thought, oh no, that's just not broken enough. I got to, you've got to get in there and, and um, break it. But ideally you will have had the mix correct in the first place. It's amazing how the correct mix of line, uh, paint for your line work makes a huge difference it sort of makes your paintings look far more sophisticated. Um, so I'm just going over the top of the wall in places where I think I can see things. There are only lines, they're mostly horizontal and linear. Um, just mixing up my glue mix again here, just, just mixing up more sticky paint. Keeping the, the water ratio down, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so you could even come down the wall in the odd place like this with, with this dark mix. Sometimes you need a bit more warmth in the dark mix. If the surface I'm you're painting over is already cool, then this dark line that I'm taking down the wall perhaps should be a bit warmer, okay? So here's another opportunity just to do a little bit of extra around the parasols, particularly underneath them. So still with the dry brush mix, just want to go a bit bluer here. Let's get some blue going there. Um, yeah, so this area here, parasols, windows, under some of these parasols, I will put, these are just, honestly, these are just suggestive marks. They're not, um, they could be figures, they could be shadow areas, recesses in the walls underneath. It could be benches that people are sitting there having their drinks and meals on, but they're not painted that way. They're not painted as little, perfect little mini shapes of benches and people. They're just nuances, subtle things that suggest that's what they might be. It's information. And it invites your viewer to participate rather than spelling it out to them, uh, which is far more fun, of course. If yeah, I, I should hasten to add, um, you you learned something many years ago. You, you won't please everybody all of the time. People will, some people will like the loose style stuff, the impressionists work. Other people won't. Um, I've long gone past that worry. I, I paint. We paint for ourselves, really. I think that's really important. And I, 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 and I know I'm not the only person to, to, to sort of say that. Um, but we do. We, we paint for ourselves. We must please ourselves first and foremost. So I'm just going around the gate a little bit here as well. I could play around a lot. And if I'm careful, um, I will play around too much. There's always that little bird on your little bird on your sitting on your shoulder saying, "Careful, you're doing too much." So, what about just a little hint down here somewhere? I'm really just skimming over dry brush, almost scumbling these areas down here. Right. Okay. Um, I didn't put any windows on this building, did I? Right. Let's put some windows slightly. It's a sort of bigger, slightly more grand property this by the look of it. So I'll put some slightly larger windows in. So here we are. Um, what about the roofs? Well, the roofs will be light, 
because roofs usually are. Even dark slate roofs in sunshine appear to be light. If it was a dull, if it were a dull overcast uh, day, I would say paint them their local color, which might might be a deep uh, terracotta red or a dark slate gray. But these are reflecting lovely sunshine. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just picking the weakest sort of gray up in place uh, 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 with the brush and just placing that in areas I think need taking down, taking out of the equation like this. And even the parasols, you see, um, now the parasols don't seem to have particularly bright colors on them at this at this distance they sort of look pale blue now it's very important to know this um, let's say the parasols were painted this lovely cobalt greeny turquoise that you can see on my palette here imagine if the, one or two of the parasols were that color a couple of the other parasols were a lovely cadmium orange now at this distance whatever color they are is going to be really weak okay um so the local so what we what we mean by the local color is that would be the local color the color if you walked up to it if you were stood within a couple of feet of it color of the parasol might be that lovely turquoise but further you get away from it the local color disappears and light takes over the light that's hitting that surface the color disappears and light takes over. So what you have to do is just say, well, it was a sort of blue. Um, I'm just gonna pick up such an infinitesimal amount of blue with a lot of water. So I don't lose the, the bright tonal value of these shapes and just hit them here and there. And then one or two of them might be a warmer color, same treatment, bit of red, lots of water, um, perhaps a bit of more yellow in it, but uh, like, almost like a pale sort of fleshy color, something like that. And that's what you need to do. You certainly don't, you've got to be careful not to lose those parasols. If whatever you put onto them is darker than the background color, you've lost them, okay? Um, I'm just skimming over some, I've got this little brush in my hand with some water in it. So I'm just knocking back areas of white paper that I don't think are working particularly well. So rubbing around some of these areas and uh, areas down here. So I, I'm looking at the outer extremities, the edges of my painting here, and I'm taking the white away. Anything that's white, I sort of take out like this. Sort of, you're sort of vignetting, making a vignette of the edges at the edges. Okay, right, let's move to a finish of this painting. Um, sort of want to knock that roof back because I'm just scrubbing back and forth because there's plenty of paint on my paper. If I just scrub back and forth like this, I'm making enough contact with the things that are around it, <clears throat> excuse me, to, um, to borrow paint from it. I, I'm, I'm just taking, I'm really moving the paint from from other areas onto this area like this so all the time i'm mindful and careful to leave this area here brightest you know the hardest edges the lightest lights the darkest darks um anything that you could add to that would be something with a bit more color you could you could break the rule i suppose and just sort of say in this particular area why don't i go for a, a um I could mix up a lizard crimson, cadmium yellow, um, and get myself a nice little red, hit of red. There is something there, red. I don't think it's a parasol. It's some sort of barricade to stop people from driving into the, into, <laughs> into the water, I think, or something like that. Um, some sort of safety thing. A little bit in the scumbling over the, the, um, the gate here with the same color. So the reason why I chose to go do that is because it's the sort of focal point territory, okay? <clears throat> right, um, 
I'm going to finish this now. Before I do just a, a simple sh shadowy sort of wash of it, I'm going to revisit um, the water. I'm picking up ultramarine blue. I need a bit, bit of fresh paint out here. Ultramarine blue burnt sienna. And I'm just sort of thinking, I can see, well, I'll take a bit of that phthalo green as well, or viridian, whichever it is you, you happen to have on your palette. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at um, some of these shapes through the water. So I'll just skim across here some sort of dark areas. It's probably seaweed underneath the water, but I'm going to make it look like it's underneath the water in a moment with what I do next. So if we do, it's a two, it's a two part job sort of thing, is it? We get, get the, uh, get the shape and tonal value and color down first. I'm just looking up at my photo. Seems as though there's dark areas around here like this. This is very much a dry brush. Uh, mix again. Here's the bottom of that wall, we think, about, about here, something like that. Remember what I said earlier, there's a, a point of where this wall should sort of speak to this side of the, <coughs> the harbour wall. Burnt sienna, perhaps, just to warm areas of that up. This is sticky. This, this paint is like sticky glue. And um, one or two, I'm just embellishing before I do the final touch, which is putting some shadow on. I'm looking at, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> take a drink of water a second. So yeah, I'm, I'm just looking to see if there's anything I can do to further enhance areas that might've been overlooked or just need that extra bit of TLC. And uh, I think we're very nearly, I think we're more or less there actually. Seems to be a little mooring uh, capstan type thing here. I don't know how important that is. Probably shouldn't have done it, but I've done it. So it's there. Wasn't the most important part of the painting. I can't see any, sh oh, I can see a subtle shadow. Definitely is the, uh, the, the light certainly seems to be coming from the right. I don't, I can't remember, um, but these suggestions that are, uh, yeah, of course, of course it is. What's wrong with me? Um, <laughs> this is getting a lot of light, isn't it? And this is getting all, it, it, this is all in shadow. So the light's definitely coming from the right. It couldn't be more obvious. Um, okay. Right, yeah, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to now, um, before I do the shadow, I want to show you what I do with this water. I'm picking up the flat brush, okay, for the first time, actually, I think, in this painting. Um, I'm making sure there's no paint in it from my previous painting. It's nice and clean. And um, I'm just, I just run my fingers over my water tub. I just run my fingers down like that to get most of the water up, but there's still a lot of water in this. It's just not dripping. Um, so what I'm gonna do is this, I'm just gonna land the brush like this and then pull vertically down on the water. Remember there's a little sandy bit just there. And that then makes it, those marks that I made, these dark marks that I made look like this, um, they're subsurface, they're under the water. got to be very careful this is why standing up is uh you know is probably essential for certain things that we do even if you sit down for most of your painting um if you can do this sat down great then <laughs> you know there's no need for me to uh 
tell you differently, but uh, I can't do this sat down. I'm just going up the wall a little bit as well in places. Because um, it's like a reflection almost onto, onto the wall. So, um, one other thing you can do, must time this right, must do it immediately. Uh, again, cleaning the brush, but this time taking all the water out, squeezing really hard with my thumb and uh, uh, forefinger, take, getting all the water out. You can just put the odd ripple, just one or two, don't go silly. Each time you do that, you need to do it again. The process must be repeated. Make sure that what you just lifted off is not still in the brush. Go across there. And it's subtle in this case because there's not a lot of dark tone in this water, but it, it, it's enough, I think. Just enough. Okay. Um, I'm going to put the shadow in. I don't want anybody panicking about this because I'm not doing much. I'm not going to do too much. And it's going to be fairly weakish shadow. A lot of the shadow's already been painted. Um, it's already there, you know, in that wall back there. And there's sort of shadow over here. And this cleaning off, I'll just show you what I'm doing here. A bit naughty of me. I shouldn't be using this brush to clean my palette, but I am. Um, so let me just clean this brush off before it, uh, before I forget. Put that brush down a second and clean my palette. That. Sometimes uh, when I know I'm going to do a shadow, which is nearly every painting I'm doing, unless it's a very atmospheric, misty sort of scene, um, Sometimes I just, I get myself a separate little white plate, dinner plate or something like that, a camping plate, enamel camping plate, and, and, and it's much quicker. Um, I don't like stopping and slowing down when I paint. I don't like anything that disrupts the momentum uh, of, of painting. So I, I, I often do that. I have something to hand. I can, I don't have to stop to clean things up. Uh, right, so here's my ultramarine blue like this, uh, alizarin crimson. You want too much of the alizarin crimson in. Um, I want this to be a sort of grayish shadow <clears throat> with a little bit of burnt sienna, just a small amount of burnt sienna. I'll pick up some water with my fingertips. It's quite weak, really. Um, I don't know whether you can see this. It's really time. I, I'm, 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 I'm very stubborn sometimes. I am. Um, the enamel's coming off this palette, and I should have ditched it. Should have been in the bin weeks ago, months ago possibly. Um, and I've got a replacement. It's silly. I've got one to replace it. Anyway, the enamel's coming off. And I have to um, just careful it doesn't appear too much on the painting. So light is coming from the right. I think the safest play to, place to dabble with a test shadow is probably on this right hand wall. I've got my trusty tissue to hand if my shadow goes horribly wrong. Um, what I like is the angle of shadow that just comes over, just slither of it comes over the gate there. I don't have to copy that. I could make it more a bigger, a bigger shadow if I want to. I might just make it slightly bigger like that than it's actually showing in the in the um, in the photo. So I'd make as few brush marks as possible. If if you work swiftly enough, you can go back to two areas if you feel as though you've got to, you know, I've left an area out there where my finger is deliberately, because I feel as though there's some sort of subtle nuances, some steps that go down or something like that there. Um, and it just happens to catch a bit more light than the rest of the areas. So if I don't like that in a moment, I would just go in and just probably just obliterate it, just get rid of it all. Now, there isn't, but something, if, 
says, if you bring a shadow, maybe there's a, a, a post just out of sight over here and some other bits. Something just tells me to punctuate this edge with the shadows and the cross and join in, join the fun about here like that. Um, so it's not going to be much uh, shadow over here, though that there is a wall there. Does something like this, does something like that. So that's out of the sun. So you could give it a bit of shadow just as I've done there. This, this wall, you feel as though it should be in shadow because it's, not, it's at the wrong angle to be getting the light. So obviously the light is coming, not just from the right, it's coming from slightly behind us over our shoulder, over our right hand shoulder. Otherwise, as the photo reveals, there's light over here. I just feel as though it would be a little more cohesive if we put a little bit of shadow there, okay? Because there, there is a bit of shadow on the very end of the wall, which is good, but there. Now there's also shadow running across the water back here, which once I put it, once I put the shadow in horizontally across the water, I will sometimes do as I did with the, um, did a moment ago and just drag a little vertical line uh, brush mark across at that. So it's easy. Sometimes I used to do this a lot. I, I'd confuse. Oh, I didn't give consideration to the fact that um, there are shadows and there are reflections. Sometimes when we're dealing with water, we don't realize that they're different things. Um, so much weaker now. So I've just picked up more water again and added to the shadow mix. And I feel much happier now. I've done... The, the foreground area. So I'm just going to sort of say this building here doesn't really need to be in the limelight. We can shadow it out like this. Perhaps just a slither of its roof up there is, is in the light. But I do like, what I do like is this little row of cottages get in most, mostly in light. Anything I'll put through there is um, the overhang of the roof in shadow like that with the blade of this flat brush. And when we turn away down here, even more water with this shadow and I'll just shadow some areas off quite randomly back there like this. Now I think that's too perfect. So I'm going to say the shadow cloud coming across this roof, cloud like this, shadow, maybe partially down here in a sort of diag slight diagonal like that. But some of those uh, parasols, not many, might be in a bit of shadow. And I think I'm just going to turn to a rigger brush and a bit of white gouache. Let's get that out of the way. And um, just lifting off a little bit here and there. And with the rigger brush, um, you can spatter. I mean, I'm always spattering with white paint, but if you feel as though you missed an opportunity to put some warmth in some of those shadows, you can always do this. And that's to take a small brush. I'm using a rigger brush. Uh, find somewhere to get that paint into the fibers of the brush like that, lots of water. And as I say, you can just tap a little bit of warmth into some of those shadow areas like this. But a uh, main thing for me, I, I think I really like doing is, is the white gouache. So let's put that paint tube back, find my white gouache. And uh, so I can see, looking at my painting here, there's areas still quite wet. The shadow areas that I've just put on are quite wet. There's a hard edge on this roof, which it should be, but it, it, it can be softened a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's one of my favourite parts of the painting, is just creating a little bit of atmosphere. So I'm 
pushing my little rigger brush here with lots of the brush has got lots of water in it um and i'll just tap in a little bit of spatter um there may be uh in these places you definitely expect to see a few mooring ropes dangling down from the top of the um the wall in places like this, just areas of hard stone surfaces that hit the light. Maybe on somewhere on the steel, there's a glimmer of, of moisture that would pick up the light. Um, back there. Amazing where you'll find um, ropes in the places you find ropes adorning and and you know even streets the but the, the lines that they put between buildings for the bunting to go up at, on occasions um there's always lines in places sort of put a little bit more random um sort of application in some areas one little window with a tiny glimmer of light in there. I mean, that almost feels tight. That that's about as that's my little sort of homage to to a little bit of tightness in the painting. And then, you know, you, you do as much as you can, as loose as you can. Um, and then, if you feel that there's there's room for a little bit of extra detail, a little bit of tightness somewhere, then as long as you're careful, you can put it in. There we are. I, I think it's really important to stop now because this is too much fun. Um, perhaps, <laughs> perhaps a little bit of that. That's what I mean by highlight. There's no highlight on on the water, not really, not not in the photo. But if we want to give that water a little bit of extra movement, then a little white ripple up with gouache like this doesn't go amiss. Okay. Let's put the mount around it and see if it's any good.